If you ever need to keep a door from locking behind you, take your bracelet off and put it in the way. If you're ever in a situation where your gear shift won't come out of park, there's a chance that the linkage from the shifter to your brake pedal has disconnected. Now in a lot of cars, there's a linkage that's activated when you step on the brake. Underneath our center console, if we peel back this guard here, we can get a look at the linkage I'm talking about right there. And when I step on the brake, you can see that it pulls back a linkage to allow the shifter to move. I've actually encountered this three times in my life. And here's one of the times I use paracord to tie the linkage back together. This is on a 2005 Toyota Corolla. Now where that pin sticks out to the left, there's supposed to be a rubber bushing there, but that fell away and the linkage had fallen off. So I grabbed some paracord, I went around the cigarette lighter, and then I came back over and tied a couple half hitches to hold it in place until she could get back home. Another good use, even if you have a short bracelet, Now you could hang it on what's already on the car, but I don't like the blind spot it can make. So instead, I just hang it to my bracelet. If your trunk won't close, instead of letting it bounce all around, get your trusty paracord bracelet. I'll match up the ends and find the midpoint. Then I'll hitch it into my lower shackle. Then I'll take two strands and run it right through the latch. Now you do want to be careful because some latches have play in them and they will slip out of your paracord. To avoid that, we're simply going to run around the right side of the latch so that it doesn't come through. And then I'll just tie a couple half hitches to finish it off. Now what if you have a door that you need to lock without a key? And so we're going to take our cord and tie it off so we can rotate our deadbolt. I'll take my cord and I'll wrap it around my finger. And I just want a bunch of turns that'll catch up on the deadbolt, but also let me release it. We'll tighten that up a little. There we go. Hook it on. Now if a sharp edge is the best place for your grip, save your hand with a paracord bracelet. Or if you have a heavy grocery bag, here's one of the simplest paracord bracelets you can make, although not very attractive. It deploys just the same. For this one, we lay the cord on top of itself a couple times, and then this free end here, that's what we pull to deploy it. We got caught up there, but there we go. In this scenario, we can't get a fitting off, and so we're gonna use a rope wrench. We'll make a cow hitch, or lark's head, and that's what we'll place around our fitting. We just need to make sure that we're tied in the same direction that we wanna pull. So I'll just go around my marlin spike a few times. And then I'll start using this as my rope wrench. There we go. Readjust. Place this thing back in. There it goes. Holy cow. That one was not easy, hell this. Mm -mm. Here's something you can do with even a small paracord bracelet. We're going to use this park bench as a pedestal. And with a diamond knot tied off on this end, we don't even have to tie off to our bench. But the idea here is you hook your hand in, you place your phone, and now your panoramic photo is that much easier to take. And instead of tying off to something, you can step on a piece of cord to steady your filming. If you ever have a pinhole leak in your shelter, and so the scenario is we have water dripping into our shelter and we need to redirect it. 
To fix it, we'll use our massive fish weave bracelet. We'll push our core through the hole. Pull it through on this side and redirect it to the edge of our shelter. And just paying attention to this hole here, the water is still coming in, but at least it's being redirected to the edge of our shelter. And for that bigger hole up top, we're simply going to double up our strands. And for this last one, you'll have to use your imagination. If we got our paracord, we can take a single strand, and within that strand, we find three more. We can take one of those strands, and it just so happens to be the same thickness as dental floss. This is not recommended by your American Dental Association, but if you are out in the field and you have beef jerky stuck in your teeth and you didn't bring your dental floss, this would help out. A quick word of caution, every paracord bracelet should have a safety brake. This one doesn't, but let me show you how to install one. We'll pull some length out and we're going to cut our loop right down the middle. We're going to fuse the ends and after they solidify, we're going to melt them down again and then put them together. If we were to fuse these together during the initial melt, the bond would be very strong and we don't want that for a safety break. So to mitigate that, we allow the ends to solidify, we'll remelt them and then fuse them together and that weakens the bond enough to become a safety break. Now we'll fuse them together. There it is. May not look as pretty, but it's definitely much safer. And now if we get caught up on something, I'm making a YouTube video. Uh, huh? What's your name? First class amateur. Whoa, wait. I Whoa, think I've heard. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Whoa, what, video, what kind of videos do you make? I make uh, knot videos. What do you mean? How to knot? Yeah, how to tie rope and knots. Oh, uh, uh, can you give me a paper to your YouTube channel? Yeah. I don't have a paper, but. Um, do you have a pen? Here, I'll give you this cord. You can have this. And what's your name again? First class amateur. First class amateur. Yes. First class amateur. All right, we'll see you later.